Hello guys and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to practice what we learned in the previous video. So let's go to IntelliJ and get started. As you can see, I'm still in the same project. I will close this class over here because I'm not going to use it. We will work inside the main class, right? So inside our main method, let's declare a variable of type string. So we will put the type, which is string, and then we will leave a space. And over here, we will put the name of the variable. So let's call this variable my name, like this. And remember to use the camel case convention. Now, of course, at the end, we'll put a semicolon. So this statement over here allocates some space inside our memory. This space will be called my name and it can store a string, all right? So let's try to print this string. So s out and over here, I will put the name of the variable, which is my name. Look at this. We have an error. This error says the variable my name have not been initialized. So in Java, in order to use variables, we have to put a value inside them, right? So let's do that. After declaring the variable, I'm going to put a value inside it. And we're going to use the assignment operator. So I will use the name of the variable and I will set it equal to a string, right? And this string will be my name in this case. And of course, we'll put a semicolon. So in this statement, we are assigning a value to our variable. And have a look, the error over here is gone. And this is because now we have a value inside our variable. So we are declaring a variable, we are storing a value inside it, and then we are printing it. Let's run our program and have a look over here. This is our output, all right? Now, instead of declaring this variable and then assigning a value, let's initialize it right away. So what we'll have to do is the following. We are going to declare the variable like this, and immediately we will set it equal to this string, right? So in this statement over here, we are initializing our variable. Let's run the program again. And as you can see, we have the same result. Now let's create another variable, all right? It will be of type string also, and it is called my job, okay? And let's assign it to programmer, for example, okay? Now let's print the new variable. So s out, and over here we will say my job. So run the program, and as you can see, this is our output, perfect. Now I'm going to create a third variable, which will be a copy of my name. So I will create a variable of type string. And for example, I will call it my name copy. Of course, the name can be anything. Now I'm going to initialize this variable to be equal to my name variable. So have a look at this. Over here, I'm going to say my name. So what will happen exactly? This over here is an expression because it evaluates to a value, all right? So what is the value that we will get from this variable? It is the value that is inside the variable. Just like when we are printing the variable, we actually print the value inside it, right? So over here, I'm getting the value that is inside this variable and I'm storing it inside my name copy. So I'm going to print my name copy over here. So s out my name copy and let's run the program and have a look. This is a copy of my name variable, all right? And pay attention. As I said, this is a copy. So for example, if I change this variable over here, my name copy will not be changed. Because over here, we are copying the value of my name and we are storing a copy of it inside my name copy. So the value of this variable and the value of this variable are separate. They are different. All right. So let me give you an example. Over here, I'm going to change the value of my name. So simply, I'm going to assign it to a new value. So I will use the name of the variable, which is my name, and I will assign it to a new string. For example, I'm going to put another name. Okay. Anything. So first of all, Note that I'm using only the name of the variable. I'm not redeclaring it. So let me show you this. I will put the string keyword over here and now I have an error. And let's see this error. It's saying that the variable my name is already defined in this scope. This means that we already have a variable that is called my name. And on this statement over here, we are redeclaring it or we are redefining it, all right? So let me remove the string keyword and let's continue. So what's happening on this statement? We are basically putting the value of this string inside this variable. So the previous value, which is this one, will be replaced. And as I said, my name copy is a copy of my name variable. So my name copy will not be affected. Let's run the program and see the output. Have a look over here. This is the value of the variable my name. So as you can see, it is now another name, okay? And this over here is the value of my name copy. So as you can see, it was not affected when we changed the value of my name, all right? So it is a separate value. Perfect. Now, let me comment this code and I want to show you one more thing. So let me create another variable. For example, I will call it arg1. It is an abbreviation for argument1. 
and you can call it whatever you want and I'm going to assign it to args sub zero right so what happens over here first of all we are creating a variable that is called arg1 and the type of this variable is a string and as you know args is a group of strings right and in order to get the first string we use the brackets and then inside it we put the number zero so over here this is an expression and the value of this expression is the first string which will be passed as a command line argument right so I'm storing this value inside this variable over here and after that I'm going to print it using the println function so println arg1 right now let's go to the run tab and then edit configuration and over here let's add a string so we are going to add some arguments for our program so let's say hello for example all right also I'm going to add a second argument for example by all right now let's press ok and let's run our program so notice that we can see the first argument printed so we have successfully stored the value of the first argument inside this variable and we printed it all right now you might ask why did I add a second argument I did that to show you that if you give the program some arguments and you didn't use them this will not be a problem so for example this program received two arguments right hello and bye and we only used the hello argument we didn't use the bye argument and we have no problems with our program and of course if you want to print the second argument you can simply use the print alarm method and print args sub one so let's run the program and now we have hello and bye okay but remember if you try to print the third argument which is args sub two this will give you a problem because we didn't give the program a third argument all right so let's run the program and as you can see we have an error so this is it for this video and i'll see you in the next one